the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, behold, a ruler came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus rose and followed him and with his disciples. And behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. For she said to herself, If I only touch his garment, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. And when Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away. For the girl's not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand. And the girl arose. And the report of this went throughout all that district. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. On this second Sunday after Pentecost 2023, the word comes to us from St. Matthew's Gospel, the ninth chapter. What do you bring to a dinner party with Jesus? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. True confession here. My wife and I do not get a lot of invitations to dinner parties. Maybe you do. We don't. Um, On that rare occasion when we do receive an invite to a dinner party, it throws our system into a frenzy. Uh, What do we wear? Uh, What time do we need to depart the house? Uh, Who will feed the dog and let the dog out? Anyone have that issue? Yeah. Um, What will we talk about at the dinner party? Will there be people there we know? Then the scramble really starts. What should we bring to this party? Um, Do we bring some food, perhaps some dessert, uh, some sort of card or, or gift maybe, a bottle of wine perhaps? Now, my wife and I were from New Holland and Terry Hill, respectively. We're not exactly in the upper strata of the wine world. So when we get an invitation to a dinner party and we're thinking, should we bring a bottle of wine, what's the next thing you do? Well, you go to the Internet and search, what bottle of wine should I bring to a dinner party? And then we go to a store and try to find it, and we're completely lost and flustered, and so we're anxious about the whole thing. So after I've given you that peek into our strange world, um, I have to ask you this morning, what does a person bring to a dinner party with Jesus? I ask this because after calling St. Matthew, and by the way, Matthew is so brief. This is a biographical statement. It's so brief. Jesus calls him, he follows. So after calling St. Matthew, the tax collector, to be one of his disciples, we find Jesus had a dinner gathering in our gospel lesson this morning. And in my mind goes to what did the tax collectors bring to this party, this dinner party? What did the sinners bring with them? What did the disciples bring along? And if you consider this gathering, it's a strange collection of people. You have government workers and prostitutes at the same dinner table, numbers guys and thieves sitting across from one another. What a weird collection of people. What did they bring to the dinner party? Food, a flask of wine, empty-handed? Yeah, most likely, right? What say you, Salem Church? What would you bring to a dinner party with Jesus? 
right now everyone's kind of going through their mind, well, what would I bring to a dinner party with Jesus? And you're probably thinking, well, Jesus has an affinity for bread. So I'm going to bring the best French baguette I can find, right? Others are thinking this morning, well, I know Jesus likes wine. And if you're like me, then you're like, I have no idea what wine to bring, probably French wine or Italian wine or whatever I can find. What else should we bring? Perhaps an envelope of money, some sort of offering or gift. Maybe you should bring a resume with all of your great accomplishments so that you can talk about them with Jesus. Well, you can see where this is all going, right? The law of God, the command, the first thing you read in the small catechism, all say that there is nothing that you can bring to this dinner party with Jesus because you're not the right kind of person to be at the dinner party. The law of God makes clear that unholy people do not belong at the same dinner party as the son of the living God, Jesus. Now, this is the default understanding of Christianity by the world, right? The party, the dinner party with Jesus is only for the good ones. It's only for um, the right sort of people. The invitations only are given to the right kind of people the nice people, the handsome people, the accomplished people. That's who the dinner party with Jesus is for, according to the law. Then at this dinner party that we hear about in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus drops the bombshell on the entire world. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. That just flips our complete understanding of what... uh, of what God should be doing in the world. Jesus flips it. This is the opposite of what the law of God says. The holy and righteous God comes for sinners, desires to eat with sinners, associates with sinners. We even read about this as a prophecy in Isaiah. Remember this? He is numbered with the transgressors. Jesus is associated with sinners. And, of course, he dies for sinners. He rises for sinners. To do what? To put an end to the law. To make the accusation against you cease. To stop that. To justify the ungodly. That's what Jesus comes to do. He comes to justify the ungodly and to forgive sinners. St. Paul puts it this way in Romans just perfectly. Jesus, our Lord, was delivered up for our transgression and raised from the dead for our justification. That's a memorization verse right there. In other words, by his suffering, by his death, by his glorious resurrection, you're hereby declared forgiven, free, free of sin, death, and the devil. So let's get back to our original question then. What do you bring to a dinner party with Jesus? And if there's any takeaway for you this morning, it's this. Bring your sins. Bring your sins. Bring your sins to Jesus and his pierced flesh for you. This is what Jesus comes to take away from you. Your sins, your trespasses, your iniquities, your ugliness, and finally, your death. He comes to take that away from you. He comes to take all of these things from you, and indeed he has on the cross. St. Peter talks about how they've been nailed into the flesh of Jesus, and your sins are his forever. This means then, with your sins gone, with your sins taken by Jesus, Death is no longer a threat to you. Christ has conquered death for you and for me. This is God's mercy in Jesus Christ. Now, where was this done to you? Where was it applied to you? You should want to know that, right? Because otherwise, it's all theoretical. Where was this work of the cross in the glorious resurrection then applied to you, given to you? Baptism. 
baptism. Baptism is where you died with Christ. And what else? Your sin died with Christ. And then you were raised up to new life in him. New and everlasting life. What does St. Paul call you? A new creation in Christ. Well, as a new creation in Christ, then sin is no longer an issue for you. Death no longer claims you. The fact is, God and sinners belong together most intimately on account of Jesus. And we see this clearly. We experience this clearly in the sacrament of holy baptism. This is where new life is bestowed upon us. And from this baptismal resurrection in Christ, which is yours, you are invited to the dinner party with Jesus. Having been repented, having died, having been raised in Christ, we come to his supper. We come to his supper and we feed on the flesh and blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of all of our sins. Now we come to this supper not to make a sacrifice to God. That's as if God would need anything from us. No. We come to this supper. Because here Jesus feeds us with his mercy and forgiveness. Here we have Jesus in the flesh for us. Remember what Isaiah once prophesied. By his wounds we are healed. And indeed we have been. We are forgiven. We've been made free in Jesus. What do you bring to a dinner party with Jesus? Only your sins. And in return, he gives to you life, hope, and salvation in him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.